I'm Brian Cosgrove from the Afternoon Ramble and the Overnight Ramble, which you can hear weekdays uh, from noon to 4 and then also overnights from 2 to 5 a.m. Will Hermes, what a pleasure to meet you. Brian, it is a pleasure. Nice to see you. Now, Will Hermes' book, um, it's, it's Hermes, right? It is Hermes. You got okay. it right. All right. Yeah, I, knew, I thought I was going to screw it up. Um, his latest book, and this is your second book? It is my second book. book but you've done a lot of writing, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let folks know a little bit about you, just because, you know, you've got a great resume. Uh, his book, his new book is called Lou Reed, The King of New York, highly suggested. His first book is Love Goes to Buildings on Fire, Five Years in New New York that changed music forever, and I would uh, assume that's during the 70s when everything exploded, right? 1973 to 1977. Okay. Will is a longtime contributor, hold on here, to NPR's All Things Considered, and Will, we are the only NPR station on Long Island. Excellent. I'll let you know, and we run All Things Considered. Uh, Will has also written for the New York Times, he's been an editor for Spin, he's done stuff for Rolling Stone, The Village Voice, and this is just a, a tremendous tremendous book because not only um, when when I think of New York City I think of people like of course John Lennon I think of Woody Allen everybody thinks I think of Suzanne Vega and I think of Lou Reed but Lou Reed I don't have to tell you is a Long Island guy he is well Long Island's part of New York City kind of right that's right and you are you're a Queens guy and you're kind of that's kind of part of Eastern Queens even that's right so you know can uh, 10 or 11 miles from where Lou Reed grew up in, Fre- in Freeport. Right, that's right. That's where you grew up. I grew up in, uh, in the sort of Fresh Meadows, Jamaica area. Gotcha. And talk about a fascinating person. Lou Reed was groundbreaking, to say the least. And one of the sources, which I found great, was that the New York Public Library... It was archives on Lou Reed that you used? Perhaps a huge part of this book. I mean, which is why it's so great to do this uh, event with you all. Yeah. Because it, uh, I was well into the book by the time um, Laurie Anderson, Lou Reed's wife, uh, donated his archives to the New York Public Library. They had to go through them and catalog them and um, make them available. Uh, but... It was, you know, there were hundreds and hundreds of boxes of, you know, writings of his and tour documents, all sorts of stuff. No kidding. Um, and it's available not, you know, not only to researchers, but really to just about anybody. If you get a library card, you can go up there uh, at uh, the Lincoln Center Library and listen to old tapes, live recordings of Lou Reed's, demos, oh um, my goodness. stuff that amazingly, a lot of it hasn't even leaked out onto the Internet. People think the Internet's got everything. Thing, but you know, not true. So, that's, a, uh, that's extraordinary. Yeah. So libraries support your local libraries. Okay. We're talking to uh, Will Hermes. His book is called uh, Lou Reed, The King of uh, New York, and uh, he was groundbreaking in in so many ways. But the fact that in the mid '60s, he's writing songs about drug use and transgender or transvestites. I mean, everybody is writing songs about having a broken heart or whatever it might be. Of course, we went on to find out there was, you know, drugs had a big part of the Beatles and others for being influenced to a certain degree. But, I mean, we're talking mid-60s and Lou Reed's talking about heroin and waiting for the man. Right. I mean, this is music that was written in, like, 65. Right, right. Um, the record was done in 66, the first Velvet Underground album. With Nico, right? Velvet? Didn't yes. It? Right. And uh, it was held for various legal reasons until 67. But, you know, his, his idea was really very simple. It was radical at the time, and it doesn't seem that radical now, given given what pop music is. Right. But uh, he wanted to take rock and roll, which was music for kids that was about cars and falling in love, and he wanted to write adult themes as lyrics. Kind of a basic idea, but nobody was doing it at the time. Yeah, and and what what I think, and through your book, wasn't it Brian Eno that said they might have only sold, what, originally 30,000 copies of the first Velvet Underground copy uh, album, but everybody who bought a copy started a band? 
Yes, and that quote has been circulated and mangled and <laughs> mis. But you got it right. Right. Um, and uh, obviously, it's a little, maybe a little hyperbole, but yeah. uh, it was hard to find um, rock bands after the '80s who did not, um, you know, consider the Velvet Underground an important touchstone, as important as the Stones, as important as the Beatles. Absolutely, I, I couldn't agree more with you. Now you got, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you got the title of uh, the book from David Bowie when he threw his 50th birthday party at Madison Square Garden for himself. And of course, Lou Reed goes way back with him, Transformer. Uh, David Bowie and Mick Ronson produced it. Big, big deal. But he introduced him as the king of New York. Yeah, well... That's how how you get the title? In David, yeah. I mean, David Bowie uh, had Lou Reed as the guest of honor. Like, he had... He was the final person to come out. He had all these guests doing songs with him, Sonic Youth and um, Billy Corgan from Smashing Pumpkins, all these kind of young artists who were up and coming. But then Lou Reed came out. They did four songs together, kind of to end the birthday concert. And Lou Lou Reed was really... uh, He was... He was a guy who, for Bowie, was such a pivotal influence. He, Bowie heard the first Velvet Underground album before it came out. Really? Because his manager got an advance acetate of it, and he was covering Waiting Waiting for the Man, the famous wow. song that is on that first album, when he was before still... Lou Reed's Velvet Underground album came out. And he was probably still Davy Jones. Yes. His yes. name was still Davy. Yeah, th- I think he was actually with another band, but yes, he was performing under the name Davy Jones. Again, I just got to remind folks who we're talking to, because we don't have a lot of time, because there's a lot of authors here. We're uh, about two minutes. Um, Will Hermes, the book is called Lou Reed, The King of New York, and uh, it's just a great, great read. It's just tremendous. And his relationship, of course, now you mentioned, uh, I think more than once, that uh, Transformer and New York are probably your two favorites. I, that would be my two favorites. They're the touchstone records, I yeah. think. People know the song, if you know Lou Reed at all, you probably know Walk on the Wild Side. You might know Sweet Jane, which That's is right. the Velvet Underground Waiting song. Waiting for the Man. And Waiting for the Man, also from the first album. And then, of course, Dirty Boulevard from New York. Dirty Boulevard from New York was the one hit he had, really. But there's a lot to his story, and I wanted this to be like a book full of, you know, facts that real super fans would appreciate. But really, a readable book for anybody who's interested in New York, uh, New York arts in the, the latter part of the 20th century, because he was involved in all of it. He was yeah. he worked he worked with Andy Warhol for many years, very close friend of his. He worked with Bowie, yeah. um, and of course he worked with Laurie Anderson, his wife. Sure. Um, it's very well written. I found it to be a very easy read. You're a good writer. Well, that's, let that's, me tell you, I think you're, 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 you're a very good writer. I appreciate and it. I just want to mention before we, uh, we go is that what you identified, the thing you love most about Lou Reed, which threw me, and I told you this before you we went on the air, is his empathy. I met him briefly once, and his reputation preceded him, known as a very cranky, kind of unapproachable guy. But when, when I read that you said the thing you loved most about Lou Reed was his empathy, it just made complete sense. It really is a beautiful thing to say. Well, you saw it in you saw it in his song lyrics. You saw it in his relationship with people who were different, who were troubled, who were had challenges. Yeah. Um, so yeah, an incredibly kind guy, uh, which you know, and he spoke, doesn't he doesn't get credit for. And spoke for the uh, discriminated against and for the uh, you know the folks on yeah, all the diff- marginalized communities. Yeah. And I really you know I, that was part of the story that I wanted to tell. And what's the best way if if somebody wants it? Do you have a website? Do you on social media? How can somebody stay in touch with Will Hermes? I would say um, come to my Substack. I'm doing a Substack called New Music and Old Music, or just find me on Instagram, which will lead you to all of my projects, pretty much. And that's uh, Will Hermes at in- on Instagram. Will, it's a real pleasure. Such thanks, a pleasure, Brian. Thanks thank for you. writing this book, and thank you for the interest. Uh, take you care. Pat. Have a great day. All right, Will Hermes. The name of the book once again is Lou Reed, the King we're, of New York. We're live. We're going to send it over to Ed German, who's got a very special guest. 